everybody welcome back to my studio and welcome back to my channel so i'm going to try to do some videos where you can actually try some of the stuff that i've been talking about in other videos on learning how to take better pictures now whenever i'm teaching students whether it be a weekend course or whether it be a multi-day course over a week or two weeks or even a semester I always like to give them homework so they can go home and try some of the stuff that I've talked to them about. And when they do that, they understand a lot better. And one of the big things I hear from people on YouTube is, we just don't understand. We just don't see where this would apply. We just don't. So this video is going to help you apply some of the stuff I've talked about. Now, if you're watching this video, down below in the description will be the different videos that you need to watch to get the information. So I'm going to talk about in one video, tripods. I'm gonna talk about another video, the 50 millimeter lens. I'm gonna talk about another video, ISO setting. Another video, shooting an aperture priority. Those are the things that are going to apply to this video. Maybe I'll think of something else and put another link down there, but that's specifically what you're going to need for today's lesson. Now, side note, you don't actually need a tripod. If you don't have a tripod, you can hand hold it. The only reason I suggest a tripod is it's a lot easier to play around, to change different settings, to get the same results, but different looks to it if your camera isn't moving. But if you don't have it, you can always set a camera on something. You can always hold the camera and just make sure you're holding it correctly and change the settings and hold the camera in the same spot. There, there's lots of ways you can do it. So you don't need to go out and spend money just to get it. Go borrow a tripod if you want to, but don't go out and spend it just for these lessons. Now, today what we're gonna talk about is depth of field. What is depth of field? It's how much before or after were you focused that will be in focus when you take a picture. It is directly influenced by the aperture that you've set on your camera. If you have a wide open aperture, like this lens here is a 1.8, you'll have a much shallower depth of field than when you're at f8 or f16 or f32. So in today's video, I'm going to go through and I'm going to take a picture of these film canisters focused on the first canister for the first set of pictures at f 1.8 and then i'm going to change the settings and take similar pictures and show you the difference in depth of feel then i'm going to focus on this canister and do the exact same thing again so you can see how in front of the canister and behind the canister changes when you focus it now the lighting in here is just like what you would have at a normal house office or whatever i'm not using any special lighting other than the lights here in my waiting room so you can do this. You don't need anything special other than a camera, lens, camera card, possibly a tripod, and that's it. So what have I done so far? So, so far I got my camera set on the tripod. I have my 50 1.8 lens on the camera. I have it set on aperture priority. And if you don't know how to do that, look down in the description below and I talk about aperture priority. I have my ISO set at 1600 ISO, which should be perfect for using the tripod in here. If you're hand holding it, I would suggest to go up higher, 3200, or if you have it, 6400, if you're in a dark room. And my camera is currently set to 1.8, and I'm going to take some pictures. Now, one thing I've done just for consistency, you don't necessarily have to do it yourself, is I've already pre-focused on the first canister. If you want to use your autofocus great go for it the only reason i'm doing it is it's easier for me to do this in the video and show you as i go through so it's not a two and a half hour video and we can go from there so it's focus, focused on the first canister focused focused on the first canister at 1.8 just going to verify that it's there verify everything that's there and i'm going to take a picture that's it that's all you have to do straightforward now i'm going to change the aperture and I'm going to go up to 5.6. I'm going to take another picture. Then I'm going to go up a little bit more. And I'm going to go up to F8. I'm going to take another picture. I'm going to go up to a little bit higher. And I'm now going to go up to F. Let's go to F11. 
Take another picture. Now you can hear it slowing down. That's what I mean by, because there's not a lot of light in here. It's the other reason I'm using a tripod. Now I'm at F11, I shot that picture. Let's go up to F14. I'll take that picture. Now I'm gonna go up a little bit higher. I'm gonna go up to F18. I'll take that picture. And I'm gonna go up as high as this lens will go, which is F22. And I'm going to take that picture. That's all there is to it. That's it, we're done. Now, like I said, for the next step, I'm going to focus on the middle canister and repeat that again. All right, so by the magic of video, I set my camera. I'm now focused on the middle film canister. I'm back at the F1.8, and I'm going to take a picture with me focused on the middle canister. All there is to it. Then we're gonna go up again, and we'll go up to F4 this time. We'll take that picture. We're going to go up a little bit higher and let's go up to F5.6 this time. And now we're going to go up a little bit higher. So let's go up to F8. We'll take another picture. Let's go up a little bit higher. We'll go up to F10 and we'll take another picture. Now let's go up a little bit higher. We're gonna go up to F14 and we'll take another picture. And again, you can hear it slowing down. Again, that's why I'm using a tripod. Again, if you don't have a tripod, go with the higher ISO. We're at F14, so let's go up a little bit higher, F18. That was F18. Now we'll go up to F22, which is the highest. Perfect, that's all there was to it. Now. What you should do, you can look on the back of your camera, but I strongly recommend that you go put them on a computer and look at them on a computer. See what the difference is. Now, if you don't know which one was which, if you got messed up and you maybe took two, you can always look at the file data. Depending upon the program that you're using, there's different ways to look at it. And it will tell you what your aperture was, what your ISO was, what your shutter speed was, everything from that file. So if you get mixed up, you can always do that. If you have a problem keeping track of things, what I always tell people is take a notepad and write it down so that you can see for yourself. Or if you don't have a program that you can see the different apertures or the different settings, write it on a piece of paper, write it down. It'll make it so much easier. So that's how to learn depth of field. Now, where would you use this? If you're taking people pictures and you don't want the background to be distracting, that's when you would shoot at the, your lowest aperture, the 1.8. If you want a little bit more of the background, maybe you have a couple rows of people, you wanna be up higher, maybe F8 or F16, or maybe you want everything in focus. That would be your F20, F22. If your camera has it, F32. Depending upon the lens, you're gonna have different apertures. So you may not have a 1.8, you may have a 3.5 as your best. You may have a four as your best. Yours may go up to F30 or F32 or F34, some other number than what I've got. That's lens dependent. And there, you've now learned what the aperture does, what your depth of field does on your camera. So until next time, I hope you have a great day. I hope to see you back here soon. Click on the like button, click on the subscribe button, and get out there and take some amazing pictures. Bye-bye now.